staff because without my staff, I'm not going to do it. Or my resume, I pay her to do it. Cool. But so you know who I have with me today, I have to report who they are. But they are very significant in the city sheriff's office. So I have my chief deputy, Ms. Ron Henderson, chief deputy. Also, I have my chief of staff. very demanding as a leader, and I think a leader should be. I try to be fair and consistent, but it's consistent with my vendors on straight. Sheriff's Office. I know a lot of y'all follow three different places by the way of those. So that's great. So Cobb Sheriff's Office is the third largest Sheriff's Office in the state of Georgia. We've got well over 800 plus employees. Our jail is the third largest jail as well in the state of Georgia. We know about 35 uh, Indians or customers or something like that. Get out of the facility. The importance of that for y'all is you got to feed them. That's important. But not only you gotta feed them, you gotta feed my employees, which is more important. Because of my, if my employees not having a good healthy meal, then they're not gonna work for them. Because they're not allowed to be. They've been there for 12 plus hours. Walk those <coughs> truck people for 12 plus hours and not have a good meal, it's a bad recipe for me and for them. So it's extremely important that you all to search out my clubs. But how do you get to that point? By good leadership. Good leadership. And I don't want to speak to it. I don't speak about Sean directly because I work with him so much. And I don't get an opportunity sometimes to work with somebody to go and actually want to be on the staff or something. I always uh, kind of go to the top of That's probably a bad thing. So why the sheriff never talked to some of the local folks? I'm going to have to go into the boss to get what I need. I'm going to make one phone call and that's all. It's a slogan. All I want is make one call and that's all and get the college. So that's how I try to like the business. Um, some of my other people may deal, they'll deal with some of the other uh, professionals and leadership from the establishment. But uh, I only make contact with the boss. So when he has issues and he ain't getting paid, you ain't getting paid, you're going to call me directly. And rightfully so. So when I have issues with anything, I call him directly. It works that way. And it works very well for me. All my vendors that I associate I'm their director of And I don't call them as I need to. They know I'm calling something wrong with the sheriff's office. And you have that most of all your sheriff's office. The summit worked on the bottom of the agency that they don't want. Again, I think that's probably the sheriff's place that organization. The Triple Crown raid that he's talking about earlier is a huge consequence. Huge. There's well over 3,000 sheriff's offices. That's 100 that earned the triple crown rate. In the state of Georgia, that's the five. So it is a feat to get in the hell of confidence to do. So we 
take about that and put it in. We're going through the predation process. They come out, they spend maybe between five to eight days or nine days inspecting our food services. And I provide them. Thank you. We didn't go there. That thing was going to school. All of a sudden, we didn't talk about it. In food service. We found some things wrong that we have to be fixed. We want to be fixed like that. We want to focus our privilege. I pick up the phone, I call him Sean Taylor. This is what I said, you my name. Got a couple of issues, I need help. Like a good thing, then what I would expect all y'all to do is get back to the chunk of some of the shares of the issues of vendors with me. I explain our situation, uh, the demo, as I called it, because we didn't get it done that day or the new partner at 8 o'clock in the morning. So if everything that was wrong that they dictated, it was done in less than like seven hours. To include finding the equipment, to meet the standard. That's leadership. Took the leadership, pressed down to support us to get those things done. Because the importance of this accreditation for us and for our agency is extremely important. And that's leadership that you're going to go to. That was leaders that's a place that make things happen. Didn't say let me call you back tomorrow. Didn't say let me check this mic so I can get it done. His first response was, I'm going to get it done. I'll call you back with the follow-up in about 20 minutes. And he did. So being a part of good leader is doing what's right, quick, fast, and efficient, and taking care of your business. Because we're only as strong as our Without your employees, I can honestly say I'm not successful without people who take that project and use them to make them successful. My vision, my mission is what they drive on, and that's how they accomplish our goal of all agency. Don't have good vision statements and mission statements. If people push those things and push the guidance out, you will not be successful. And so we should start making sure you have good employees as well. I'm teaching this group in another county the hiring process. The main thing we talk about is hiring the right people. Having the interview techniques to hire, hiring, knowing what a good employee looks like, what a bad employee looks like, knowing the proper project plan to bring the right people to the organization to make them successful. To give it to me as a leader that that found the solution to a hiring solution. So these are important. We all heard a term. Agency is only to me that is the best in the district. When the head fails, the tank is And that's an absolute truth. As a leader, we should always take advantage of what we have, opportunities we have. Never, never make excuses. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I mean it. Fix the problem and keep moving. Sometimes the best is also who make, make bad decisions. Because nobody's perfect. But if you make a bad decision, admit it. Then correct it. You don't make the same bad decision again. Hold your employees accountable for their actions. I don't mean to just trick them, but hold them accountable for their actions. Have a standard that's fair and consistent. I did 36 years in the military, two combat deployments. First, like they said about Sergeant Major, which I started as a division command Sergeant Major. So I made it me as hell when it's very consistent. So I tell them what they're doing, they're going to do it all the time. Because they're going to be very consistent, and they're going to lead them to the battle, and they're going to back home safely. So if you don't have that fair consistency in how you do business, it causes an issue with your employees. So I always try to be fair and consistent. Some people call that being mean. I don't. I'm a little different from here. I'm 36 years old there now. I'm like, you have those rough heads in this thing a little bit. But my employees have turned to learn to understand that way. Sheriff, sure, you don't spy the play a lot, but you can get on when you need to. And sometimes we need to leave less words than we need to talk about. 
Well, mom always told my grandma to say, God gave you two ears and one mouth to listen more than you talk. Sometimes for us to listen more to what our employees have to say, in effect, effectively listen to what they're saying, and give them that attention they need to talk to, it shows them that you care about them. That's part of being a good leader is what effectively listen. Don't always want to interrupt and tell somebody to get your point across. Sometimes it's best to sit back and listen to what they have to say. Completely. Or it's over it all in and then give them a good conversation. Versus cut them off and let the conversation. So you got to look more being a good leader to listen to what about not listening. Even when you want to hire an employee, this is what we do for the table when you want to So if you trying to talk too much on that interview, you're going to miss a few. It may be that key word that you should not hire. So it's important to be a leader to listen to very carefully. You know, as public safety officials, the summit has a big responsibility. You feed the inmates. speak for the one like I said, I keep speaking of Rashad as well. That's why I always do it. His leadership too. Do y'all have core values inside? Who knows what y'all core values? See, now y'all remind me of the class I just called it heaven's eye. And they said, one word, I was thinking about this for him all day. 
I want the best for my employees. I want the best for my facility. And I want the best for my enemies. So yes, I'm a little difficult. I admit it. But I'm not too difficult that I can't work for. My difficult meaning that I want the best for us and for you. Because what that means is the best service you give me is not to everybody I give you. I'm the third largest sheriff in the state of Georgia. I'm like I got state for talk to small people. I talk to other um, sheriffs while I go to conferences and they say, well, we do the service you got. And I got the best one around. I got great leadership. They respond well. The food is good. Oh, real tell me that. And I tell them. But if I'm not strict, I say strict, I'm not proud of that. If I'm not compassionate about what you do in service and fire, then y'all don't show me that leadership and respect that. But I can't say that to everybody. You know how your name gets spread around? By the word mouth of sheriff. Mm -hmm. If one sheriff got a heart ain't with you, he ain't gonna say nothing good about you at the conference or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He's gonna talk negative. He's made make you lose business. And you're not in the business of losing business. You're in the business of gaining business, right? When you gain business, you make money. I don't know what you get bonuses now. I wish I did, but maybe you can get a bonus. <laughs> right, maybe. I'm not trying to get bonuses. My wife heard the fact that they do good for that, for that point of the profit, they get a bonus. I'm going to do that. I'm going to sell the book. You need to say, oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Hold on, man. Why do y'all sit in here all wrong? Can y'all hit me in the back? Or what's up, sir? See, y'all just, y'all just, oh, it's after lunch, right? I got it. Y'all got to do stuff. So what I don't do when I got soldiers like this, I say, y'all, I get my military force and command something, so I have to get on the I'm going to get about to stand up for a few minutes and, Shake it up. Y'all need to stand up and lose yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all need to stand up. Y'all need to So your homework is, y'all back tomorrow for your last day or is it Friday? Tomorrow. tomorrow. So when y'all come back tomorrow, y'all need to tell the president what y'all mission statement and vision is. Vision statement so she knows. I just want you to know that it is our job to make your facility a safer place to work and live. That's what we do at Summer. See? So Let me see, that's what I'm, see, when you stood up and shook it up, now y'all get some participation up there. That's what I'm talking about. So, with those things in mind, what do you think as a leader help you put those things into action and push that down to your employees? sure that your subordinates are doing what they're supposed to to provide that service that I signed that big contract for that I'm going to get. How many shares do y'all know to walk around with a uh, meat thermometer in their pocket and put it into the saddle <laughs> farm check? One. One. <laughs> I do it. You know why? Because the food you serve my employees, I want it to be right. Well, I got that from the military. If you didn't tell, I was, again, I'm 36 years, so I'm major. So we checked the food. I eat down there myself. If it ain't right, I tell them. 
If the tea don't taste right, hey, something wrong with this tea, you need to clean the, the, the tea room out. If the salad's not tasting right, what's the temperature of the uh, salad on? Too much salt in this food. I got high blood pressure. You trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> things like that is important for me for two things, two reasons. One, I think it's important that some of those I'm going to check. I am spot checking food. Two, it's important that my employees see me eating the food they're eating. Because so long ago, they never saw a boss down there eating. You see what I'm saying? So it changes the dynamics of them. Well, if the sheriff is not eating, it must not be bad. And if he's coming two days a week or three days a week, well, I don't think I'm going to start eating. And it just shows you, know, you lead the way for your employees to see what it is. And it's all, again, going back to leadership. Summit is a great organization, but it's led by great people like each and every one of you in this room. But your leadership is not something that you should take lightly. For me, my leadership puts people's lives in my hands every day. Decisions I make can determine, unfortunately, sometimes it could be a life decision that I'm making on someone. A year and a half, almost two years ago, I lost two deputies in line due to shooting in one night. Horrible, horrible incident to lose not only one, but two in one night, in one incident. And you imagine the leadership that I had to show to my employees, two dead deputies, two grieving families, a grieving community, and they're looking for you to be strong and make statements. How's the sheriff's department going to recover? What is Sheriff Owens going to say to pull everybody up and come back to work tomorrow? Losing anyone is traumatic when you lose two. It is unbelievable. So bad that I, the whole ship could not come back to work anymore. I had to replace a whole ship of 14. I said, I can't, I can't do it anymore. That's pressure. But the crime don't stop. The inmates didn't stop coming in, and our daily work did not stop or slow down. That took leadership to come in. Not only me, but my staff that pick up and do things to come up with a plan how I'm going to replace 14 individuals in less than 24 hours because they couldn't go back to work anymore. You can imagine deputies seeing their, their partner shot and killed. But not only them, 911 operators couldn't work. When you hear grown men and women on the radio hollering and crying and shooting and occurring, it's an eerie feeling. And it affects people a different way. And it affected those women in 911 where they had to take time off. They had PTSD on that incident and they weren't even there. Just hearing that on the radio and hearing the, the streaming, the shooting, the agony in those men's voices that they're dying on the radio and they can hear it and they can't help them. The ambulance personnel who tried to save them in the agony that they couldn't. Who do they look to? They look for the sheriff, for leadership. How are we going to get through this? So as a leader, you got to be strong and sometimes emotionless because when your employees and constituents and the community see you as not being strong, it can have an effect on your employees. They tell me, Sheriff, how do you do these interviews and how do you do this and you show no emotion? I said, well, believe me, I have emotion, but it wasn't the time for me to show emotion in front of this TV camera. It was time for me to say, be strong for our agency. So we have a model of our agency, it's one team, one fight, one community. And that night we all stood as one. And so as a leader, sometimes you gotta do things that you normally don't do. You may not, you may be very emotional, or you may wear your emotions on sleeves, or sometimes you don't show any emotion like that. Either. But you have to be able to cope with that in your own way, but still protect your people. As some people like to say, you gotta protect your brand. And I had to protect my brand with the sheriff's office. But not only protecting my office, my, office, my deputies, my employees, the 911, I had to protect the community, because they still had a right to service. And we still had to provide. So we had to devise a way, me and Chief had to come up with something that we could do to provide that service and get comfort to our employees. 
Leadership through tough times is what makes great leaders. Everything you do is not always going to be a bed of roses. You have to make tough decisions sometime in, the, in, the, in your job. Some of them could be life, life making decisions, maybe. Or it could be career making decisions, which is very tough to make. You may have to make a tough decision about either retaining an employee or terminating one. But you have to look at what's best for your organization. You know, we always look at what's best for us sometimes. But as leaders, we've got to put what's best for the organization. I know that's extremely tough sometimes to do. But without an organization, you wouldn't have a job. You still have a family, which is always first and foremost. But you still have to make sure you make those decisions that's best for the organization. Because that is what your brand is, is that organization. Summit is a brand. Summit wants to be, should be known as a leader in food services and correctional institutions. How do you get there? By having good leaders who make good, strong, competent decisions are not scared to make the tough decision. It's easy to make the easy decision, but it's tough to make a tough decision. If I gotta fire two or three people, that's the worst day I got all day long. Sheriff, sure, you do it all the time, yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not something I like to do because I know that individual have a family to take care of. Now, they're unemployed. How are they going to take care of the family? And specifically, if they're the sole breadwinner of the family. So now I just devastated the family. And knowing that's something you don't want to do, but sometimes you have to because the decision they made kind of forced your hand. But you got to be willing as a leader to make those decisions. As a food service provider, would you allow them to bring me bad food to serve to my inmates even though you know it's bad, but it's cheaper? Would you bring me something I didn't ask for and then charge me double for it because I didn't pay attention? Would you bring bad employees into my facility who you know was borderline when you hired them, was crooks, bad people sold dope, and you bring them to work for me and you put them in my facility and they bring contraband into my facility? <coughs> no! I hope not, because then I'm coming looking for you. You can steal my express and bet your ass on that. I'm coming looking for you. Because now you have jeopardized my deputies and my inmates. So leadership is always it's about always doing the right thing, making tough decisions when you have to, being fair and consistent, and protecting the brand. Protect the brand. For y'all, that's protect summit. My people say when they go was, well, I said, what you do? He said, protect my share. What you doing? I'm gonna protect my share. I said, all right, and I like that. Don't do anything when you get your sheriff in trouble, and the sheriff won't do anything to get you in trouble. That's very important, ladies and gentlemen. Protect your brain. Do what's right. Lead from the front. Let me tell you that again. Lead from the front and not from behind. Leaders always step up to the front. Don't be behind waiting to see what Joe and Susie gonna do. Be a leader, be out front. Make those tough decisions, make those tough calls. Protect the band. Step up if you wanna be a boss. Step up if you wanna be a boss. And when you don't step up, then you don't deserve to be a boss, right? You want to make this $200,000, $300,000, all that big money y'all make up here. Uh, I'll just kidding. You want, you, know, you want to step up and you want to, you, know, you want to make the money, so you got to step up and play the earnings. I have people making $100,000, and I said, well, you need to earn the money. Don't come to me to make a decision for you. That's what I'm paying you $100,000 for. Make a decision, stick with it, stand behind it, and if it's wrong, fix it and get it right and admit the mistake and drive your people to being successful. And I'll close with a couple of things. We have an education requirement, and I, I, I preach education. I want my deputies to be diverse. I want them to have a diverse workforce. I truly believe that uh, the sheriff's office of any law enforcement should be a reflection of the community which it serves. I truly believe that. 
because I think that way allow, allows us to be more intertwined with our community. I can't have 90% of one race and 10% of this, none of that, and then the community I'm serving is 90% mm -hmm. of, of the race I only got 10% of. It makes no sense. We should be as diverse as we possibly can to provide the best service. Diversity is good for me. Education is important. I want to have. I want to hire the most talented, diverse, and educated people I can. That way, I can tell my constituents and my own self that I hire the best out there for this community, for Kyle County, and that goes a long way with our constituents. And specifically now, when we got these uh, Generation X is coming up in the millennials and all these younger, they got a different mindsets. I'm looking around the room, a lot of y'all are my age uh, or younger. We old. <laughs> I'm gonna we old. Now we ain't too old, we can't still work. We just we just older. And we had a different mindset. The young guys these days, they don't stay at a job forever. They don't if they are there five or seven years, we're good. Not like when I'm coming up, they're staying 20, 25 and retiring. That's not happening that much anymore, ladies and gentlemen. So now we gotta be able to change our leadership style to effectively meet these young people that's coming to our workforce. Their, uh, their big thing is family time and off time. <laughs> family time, off time. That's their big thing. They don't like putting in extra hours. They don't like doing a lot of extra. They just want to come in, do what they got to do, and they're out. So we got to adjust your leadership style to meet our employees of today. And some of us don't or won't do that. It's going to cause you a problem. Because the young folks we get in today are highly educated. And everything is on this computer and their phone, and that's all they do all day long. And if you take it away from them, if you steal it, then there can be some issues. So we got to adapt to the time, the individuals that we have. Look at your hiring practices and making sure you're adapting. We had to change our hiring practices because half the states across the United States, marijuana is illegal now. Well, possible was if you smoke marijuana the last five years, you can't be hired, you can't hire Cobb County. Hell, every other state around in the union is smoking. So we had to reevaluate that and say, is that the right thing to do? And so you gotta look at things and how time times are changing around, which will cause you to change your leadership style. You gotta be flexible as a leader. Just because I did this 20 years ago, don't mean you can do it today. So as times change, your leadership style should change. You should always have your core values of your leadership style, but you still got to be able to change to reach your more employees. And then another sign of good leadership, being able to change and adapt to these younger employees that you're having today, as well as change and adapt to your upper level management. Excuse me, because they may change. Some 800 plus employees that adapt to me when I came in. I had to adapt to the chief that came in and the chief staff. Because we're different. My predecessor was a 35, 40 year guy in office. And they've been on the same thing for 35, 40 years. Here's, here's this um, young hotshot guy come doing something totally different. They're like, dang, what's wrong with this dude? We ain't never did that before. What's they word they always say, Captain? Uh, that ain't how we used to do it. We always did it this way. And I said, well, you mean it? That ain't how it's going to be now. I don't want to hear that word anymore, how it used to be. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. And so as leaders, we got to be able to adjust, react, and change how we do things to effectively meet our employees. So let me say this, and I'll get off of here because I know y'all ready. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. If you have an opportunity, there's a book out by Stream Ownership. Y'all heard that? Stream Ownership by Jaco Wingman. It's a former Navy SEAL. It's about leadership. Excellent book. What I do to my command staff, that I took over in several um, couple years, they have to read. So I give them a book. I even go back and give them his book, read it. And we will discuss that book at our staff meeting. And what I do, so I don't you know, embarrass someone and so the whole book, okay. Chief Jones, you got chapter one. Cindy, you got chapter two. Anderson, you got chapter three. So 
everybody who has that chapter talk about that chapter. And you can get some great conversations out of that and what they got out of that book on leadership. You can get the smaller books, the one minute manager on, uh, on leadership, small, 35, 40 pages. Y'all, I know you've seen those, right? Very good thing, a very good conversational piece that don't take them you know, months to read. They can get it done in a day because it's not a lot of pages, but it's really mind opening to hear them explain to you what they read and how they perceive those things. And that gave me an opportunity to really now me evaluate the thought process of my leaders. And then we did the survey, what's that thing called? The, yeah, we did the disc profile as well, and it helped out to be knowing leadership styles. And I, and I will say this, I think it's my last one. Um, we did that and it was very eye-opening to me because now I know who I can holler at and who I can't holler at. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get out, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you laugh, I'm, it is serious. But now I know who I can, you know, who I can talk kind of tough to. And I know people I got to really uh, You know how to talk to people because you know their mindset. You know who's emotional, who's not. And it's really good leadership indicating when you use those tools to help you how to talk to some of your employees and leadership and supervisors. So ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this as I'm getting ready to close today. It is such an honor and privilege to stand before you today as the sheriff of Cobb County, as I like to say, the best sheriff of in the state of Georgia and soon to be the nation. Uh, it is a privilege to stand before some great leaders of you all. If y'all are not great today, you will be great in the future. So continue to work hard, perfect your craft as a leader, look at your organization as a gold standard, and what can you do to help your gold standard become better? So thank you so very much.